Hello and welcome. Some time ago I made a video about how to fix a dead Dallas real-time clock module by attaching an external battery to it. If you didn't see that video, maybe you should take a look at it first. However, this time I would like to revise the approach and simplify it a little bit. I also would like to point out some disadvantages and talk about how you can work around them. In the last video, I drilled two holes in the housing of the real-time clock module and soldered two cables, plus and minus, to attach them to external CR2023 cell battery. Every side real-time module differs a little bit. Sometimes the internal battery contacts are just under the surface and sometimes you have to drill more in depth. This can make the soldering process afterwards a little bit more complicated and drilling itself can also damage the module in the worst case. So, meanwhile, I realized that the whole thing can be improved or even simplified a little bit. First, take a look at the pinout of the real clock module. This is a 24 pin IC and we are actually interested in the pin 20 for plus and the pin 16 for minus. These are the pins where the internal battery is connected and where we have to connect our external one. These two pins, however, are only in the schematics, but are completely missing in the real module. That's why we have to drill the holes to get to the pins. However, the pin 16 and the pin 12 are both common ground and internally connected to the minus pole of the battery. So we actually don't need to drill two holes, since only one hole to the pin 20 for battery plus is sufficient. The minus pole of the external battery can therefore just be soldered to the pin 12, making the whole modification a bit simpler and safer. I got multiple main boards, all with dead real-time clock batteries, so I decided to make some modifications in a row. Mostly it was similar to the modification I showed you in the last video, however this time I drilled only one hole and I experimented with different places for the battery holder. This is how it looked like in the end. By the way, last time I told that this modification works with Dallas and Odin models, however this time I also had one named Benchmark, and this modification worked there as well. All of them seem to be very similar. Back to the battery holders. As you can see, I placed them differently. The most stable place is on the top of the module, however this makes the whole thing too high and can block the extension cards if the battery is located unfortunately. Furthermore, it's not very handy to pull out the battery for replacement. If the high of the model is not important, I suggest to glue the battery holder vertically, like this. It makes the setup even higher, but if it's not in the way, it's by far more comfortable to replace the battery. But it also makes it less stable, so glue it properly or you'll pull the battery off together with the holder. And if the location of the module is very tight on the mainboard, you can just solder two cables with a battery case on the other end, like this one. They cost only a couple of cents in a pack from China and exist for CR2032 cells, as well as normal AA battery packs. Now let's get to one very interesting question, which I got in the comments to the last video. The complaint was that due to internal battery left inside of the module, the external battery would drain very fast. Well, I actually agreed about that, but I was curious about how fast it would drain, so I made an experiment. I made an additional modification to one of the batteries and cut the contact to the internal battery by going deeper with the drill. Let me show you what's inside. There is such a battery inside with the standoffs on each pole, and all we have to do is to cut through one of the standoffs. Since we drill for the plus pole, we can just cut that one in the same go. In my case it looked like this, but I don't guarantee if it looks the same in all of them. Anyway, the rest of modification was just the same. I added a battery holder for CR2032 and that's it. Afterwards, I took two modified modules, one with cut pole and one without, and put identical batteries in both of them. I left the modules then in the corner for 28 days. The starting voltage of both batteries was just about 3.2 volts. After the test period, the voltage of the module with uncut internal battery dropped to about 3.05 volts. On the other hand, the voltage of the battery in the module 
with cut internal battery dropped to 3.1 volt. So yes, the internal battery seemed to drain the external battery a little bit. However, the discharge slows down usually and the module usually continues to work down to about 2 volts. So if you extrapolate the time, I guess your external battery will hold at least one year before it goes under 2 volts. So is it worth to cut the internal battery contacts? Well, I guess you can do it. But you could destroy the RT module also in the worst case. So if not sure, just don't. So far, I hope you found it kind of informative. Please leave your likes or dislikes or comments below and I hope to have you on my channel anytime soon. Thank you and goodbye.